tracking right now. But we've been in conversation with Sunil Subramaniam, CEO of Sundaram Mutual, uh, in the last couple of minutes, get, share, getting his perspective on the markets. But before I continue our conversation, I once again just uh, pull up what's happening as far as the pre open quotes are concerned. You're seeing a cut of almost half a percent in terms of the way the benchmark indices are panning out so so far as far as the benchmarks are concerned 120 122 points lower on the sensex as well maruti top gainer up by nearly seven tenths of a percent gale and drl are also some of the other stocks that are in positive while access bank kane indian vidanta are getting hammered so we have a quick, uh, quick comment on the financials how, how are you approaching that that side uh, we are bullish on financials. Okay. In the shorter run, we are more on the private sector. Okay. But we are picking up good quality public sector exposures because mm -hmm. we think long run, they are really going to be the double whammy uh, stock as for the market is concerned. Because there is so much bad news being factored into them. Okay. That well capitalized public sector, uh, and I think which have seen the maturing of the MPA cycle. Sure. Uh, there are some who have been recently waking up MPAs and they will take time. But some who are already there and there. You know, and as economy improves, they automatically the NPAs get seen. And so anything provided for gets straight to the bottom line. You know, that's the thing of the MTA. So it's bad news very early right. and yeah. it's good news also very early. So we will gradually be picking up good quality public sector over the next uh, few months. Because in the long run, uh, yeah. interest rates, you know, uh, lending is fixed rate. Borrowing is floating rate. They can drop deposit rates at the drop of a hat, you know. So we are very, very bullish on financial sector. And because they also will participate in the second demand leg. Now the initially yeah. it's going to be infrastructure lending driven leg. Yeah. The second leg will be the demand consumption. And when people's disposable incomes goes up with the next pay commission coming up, See, I think banks are really going to sure, benefit. Fair, fair no, point taken. Financials clearly will continue to be in focus, but at least for today, it's uh, looking as if you could possibly see somewhat of a little bit of a muted move because Axis Bank was down nearly 5% in the pre-open. Let's see how it's opened up for trade today. Well, it's uh, taking quite a bit of a knock, 6.5% pull up Axis Bank for you and get a quick mention going as far as Axis Bank is concerned and the way that stock's tanking today, 7% lower as far as Axis Bank is concerned and this one is clearly the big loser among the banking and financial names today from the private banking space, 7%, 7.2 now and it's only fading in terms of what we're seeing as far as Axis Bank is concerned. I want to quickly pull up some of the brokerage views and guess what, there's not a single sell that I'm seeing post the earnings as far as brokerages are concerned well in fact you've you've got not a single sell call coming in as far as uh, access bank is concerned this is pretty baffling in terms of what we're seeing so far this morning remember numbers came out yesterday the performance was pretty pretty much in line with what we're seeing if I look at what the analysts have actually had to say post the earnings con call or the analyst meet for that matter they've all got a buy recommendation in fact uh, on the consensus side 92 percent of the analysts who actually cover access bank have a buy recommendation on this but remember that's more from a 12 month horizon that we're seeing but post earnings as well there hasn't been a single uh, move uh, uh, lower as well in terms of a rating change as well for access bank all of the analysts uh, have recommended a buy or have an overweight rating when it comes to access bank itself so that that clearly is uh, what we're seeing in terms of the way asset call, uh, as far as Axis Bank is uh, panning out, probably some bit of uh, you know uh, worry coming in in terms of the way the commentaries played out as far as asset quality is concerned is what we've been reading in regard to Axis Bank. Pull up a couple of the brokerage notes here as well. There has been some bit of worry as far as asset quality is concerned, and th that probably could be in regard to the way the infra book exposure Axis Bank historically has go got as well. Remember, this is probably one of the most leveraged books uh, or, or one of the most heavy books when it comes to the infra space as far as Axis Bank is concerned. We, we've again been finding it a little bit difficult in terms of the way things have been developing on that side. So asset quality strain once again probably impacting Axis Bank is what we're seeing. But surprisingly so, you still haven't seen any of the analysts go ahead and cut their ratings uh, is what we're seeing. 7% lower on the stock Kane and Vedanta, some of the other names that are tanking while Kotak Mahindra Bank on the other hand is up by nearly 1.6, 1.7%. Gale, Indusin and HDFC Bank are a couple of the other side, uh, other stocks that are actually gaining. So one really has to narrow it down. It's only Yes Bank, ICC Bank and Axis Bank that are actually cracking in from the private banking space. Kotak and HDFC Bank seem to be holding on. Uh, Maruti, marginally in positive about what we've been tracking so far, at least on the opening uh, that we're seeing uh, in terms of the way a couple of these stocks are moving right now. Okay. 
I know we were talking about banks earlier, Sunil, but let's just discuss access in a little bit more detail because uh, as, as Priyanka also just mentioned, we haven't uh, seen too much negativity on this particular counter. It's been a pretty steady performer. So even if we start seeing these asset quality concerns on the private side, uh, it, it, does that really bode uh, ill to you because um, it just seems to continue to put pressure on the entire banking uh, pack? I think I referred to this in my earlier answer. It's yeah. about maturing of the NPA book. Right. Those have recently picked up assets. They yeah. are only now going to see that cycle. But those who have been in it for longer, the, uh, it automatically matures. So I think the key with the infrastructure thing, and that's the reason people are not going to jump to a sell on that stock. If you look at it, is the fact that any infra-related thing, right? There's a, a concept in banking of willful defaulter and non-willful. So, willful default is a guy who's got the ability to pay but is choosing not to pay because of tactical reasons. The other guys who are unable to pay, they're willing. Mm. So, it's a matter of the order book, it's about the economy picking up and then they automatically come back. But RBI has been so strict and so, it's good actually, that they, they provision at the earliest sign of weakness. You know, 90 days, no interest payment, 180 days, you straight away start provisioning. So, these kind of things are actually helping because what happens, short-term money get depressed yeah. because of the writing up of the provisions. But when there is recovery, when interest gets paid back, automatically the provision reverses and you suddenly see a spike in earnings in one quarter thanks to write back of provisions. So I think that's where brokerages and analysts like you know, us don't really jump at every quarter looking at the NPA book and taking yeah. a call, but it's more on the health. What is the composition of the NPA? Which sectors? Are they because somebody is running away with the money or is it because you no know, economy is still yet to recover in certain sectors? So I think this is uh, essentially that at play. So not to panic on these. Right, Axis Bank uh, clearly is the big one that's actually taken a knock today. It's a top traded volume as well. There's a huge spike in volume straight away on opening as far as Axis Bank is concerned. And you traditionally see that with this kind of a fall on an index major of 6%, 6.2% uh, lower right now as far as Axis Bank is concerned. Massive cuts coming in on this counter. In fact, I, I, you know, the, just looking at some of the brokerage notes this morning, They've not changed the recommendation on the stock, but they've they have tweaked their estimates at least. Is what I'm saying. Uh, what, what I'm seeing at least clearly across some of the major ones. They've all somewhat uh, uh, cut their earnings estimate by one to three percent for FI16, FI17. Is what the consensus uh, view seems to be, and uh, just some bit of tweaking taking place uh, as far as the target price is concerned as well. But again, no, no one's really gone ahead and uh, changed their recommendation. They've retained buy or they've retained no overweight when it comes to Axis Bank. So wonder if you you possibly might see some bit of interest at these kind of levels for Axis Bank as well with a 6.3% knock that we're seeing. But again, one, always remember that the, the house calls that we get you are more from a long-term point of view. They're 12-month views at the analyst share uh, uh, and uh, they're, not short, they're not based on short-term trends. But nonetheless, they've tweaked their estimates looking at the way the last quarter numbers have played out for Axis Bank this uh, morning is what we're tracking. So that, that's the big stock in focus. Beyond that, a couple of the other news makers TVS Motors cooling after a 12% rally yesterday, it's down only 3% today uh, is what we're seeing. Vedanta is down 1.4 as well. You've got uh, some of the other names, RDI Agro uh, is the other stock uh, which has been in news today. Kane India is down 3% is what we're tracking. Mining and metal majors, Vedanta came up with earnings yesterday, Mr. Subram, any thoughts there as to what one should be doing? Metals, I think there's still more pain okay. to go. Uh, but what will happen very shortly is one is the rate of the drop will be lesser okay. and also the revised estimates will now factor in the dropping metal prices. So if you look at earnings vis-a-vis -vis estimates on a sequential basis they will still be down mm -hmm. but vis-a-vis -vis estimates you won't see that much of a variance. So that's where you know easing will happen but I think there's still more pain to go. What about from the mid cap pack, uh, what's catching your eye there? Some earnings have been uh, fairly encouraging. Yeah, I think we remain bullish on mid caps. As a, as a fund house, we have a disproportionate share of both the assets yeah. under management and the inflows in the segment. And if you look at it, you know, over the last couple of years, you know, mid cap and small cap funds have written like 50 to 60 percent per annum uh, return. So yeah. I think the the picking the right stocks, it's not so much of a sector pick as much as individual companies which yeah. we go and study, and it comes net resultant sector outlook comes up. But like I said, the auto pack. Yeah. The, the, the core uh, industrial pack, uh, cement, these kind of uh, plays are what are helping us in our mid and small cap uh, segment. Right. 
you know, I, I want to pull up uh, Lupin as well. Just get that stock going. It's actually down 2% after a 5% crack yesterday. Just pull up uh, Lupin. There you go. This one's ha this one's been having a tough time. It's been it's been struggling. Uh, post those numbers, margins got eroded yesterday. Is what what we saw. And more importantly, was a U.S. business as well that that had some bit of headwinds. Is what we saw, and hence the kind of fall that we uh, noticed as far as Lupin is concerned. You know, Mr. Ron, I, I know you, you're more of a fan of a long-term investment uh, play, and you probably will probably look at these kind of opportunities much more closely. But but having said that, the pharma space has always had very rich valuations. Well, you know, looking at the way Lupin numbers played out, any takeaway, any 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 you know uh, you know mention as far as sectors concerned out here, because US obviously is the primary geography for a whole host of pharma players. Yeah, but you know, pharma is a tough one to call as a sector because mm. you see there are three clear players there. Okay, there's one who are competing. Right up there with the with the with the branded names, right? Okay. The second is the generics generics play, right? Those who are taking the off patent drugs and going. The third is the KPO, that is who are doing the outsourcing bit. Right. So there's a complex pick, and the reason valuations are high because they are perceived as defensive, so one, and second because. MNC uh, play is very very high, so I think it's a very complex sector to take a single uh, biggest call on on that. But the we are not very very uh, right now bullish on that for a simple reason of the fact of the fact that though the rupee has weakened, we've actually strengthened vis-a-vis -vis other uh, emerging market economy. Mm -hmm. So in pharma, there's such a lot of factors at play that it's it's a very very uh, tough to give a very overall call on a sector on that. Some of the mid caps actually are. Uh this morning are looking a little uh, sad after earnings. We've got Thermax down, in fact, uh, a miss on uh, estimates there. We'll pull up that counter for you. And uh, some of some other names uh, as well uh, that aren't uh, that aren't in fact uh, nuclear software, for example, that's another one that's actually down, in fact, the most in three months after we're seeing a slump in uh, Net Supreme Petrochem as well, another one there from the mid cap pack. So today, in fact, we're having a little bit uh, of the uh, opposite uh, impact coming in with some of these names. But a lot of the, uh, a lot of the highly leveraged capital good plays, uh, Mr. Subramanian, continue to, of course, grapple with just trying to get things going and, you know, getting execution uh, on track so it, it seems like it's going to take them a lot longer what's your view on, on that part of the market you're very very right that it's going to take longer but given the fact that we generally take a three to five year view right and if you take our mid-cap fund the top 10 stocks our average holding period is four and a half years right so we do buy into these uh, at these uh, bottoms whenever they crack and we also trying to push investors into that. So what we've done, for example, in the extreme low end of this, right, a micro cap fund, which is below 300 stock on the index, right? Yeah. So we've been we've launched a five-year NFO, telling people right. that we're going to put it in exactly these kind of cyclical stocks. Right. And we've collected about 100 crores in the first tranche, uh, which closed a couple of uh, days ago, and we've opened the second tranche now. So we believe that putting money into exactly these cyclical sectors with a five-year perspective will be absolutely a very good win-win uh, situation from an investor perspective. And we're trying to push investor behavior into taking a call on these right. from a longer-term perspective. Right. All right, so that's as far as the mid caps are concerned. But let, let's try and focus a little bit on the big stock of the day. That's Axis Bank. It's uh, tumbled quite a bit today, 6.3, 6.4%. Let's try and understand: is this just more of a company-specific issue, or, or are there deeper concerns when we talk about the entire sector? And who else to talk about the the sector rather than Hemendra Hazari, banking expert, who's been tracking the space closely for years together? Hemendra, thanks so much for taking the time out today. Axis Bank's taken a quite a bit of a knock up post the concerns once again regarding asset quality. What, what do you make of it? Yesterday, Bloomberg TV had broken a story about uh, how Standard Chartered had uh, now put pictures on SR, on SR's holding company. And there you had highlighted that Axis Bank also had a considerable exposure. Now, if you saw the reported numbers of asset quality uh, that the bank declared yesterday, there was really no cause for alarm. Uh, that is because you know, such exposures have not yet been classified as non-performing or I believe or even as stress. So it is possible that the market is uh, reacting to such development. Right. But Mr. Hazari, we've had uh, yeah, a lot of brokerages that have been um, coming out with asset quality concerns saying that it's disappointing in Q2. I, I understand what you're saying, but then what do you feel the market's looking at? Uh, because they're obviously reacting to a larger concern here. It is most rightly and fact, it is a belated concern because it is highly unlikely that banks such as Axis Bank uh, can escape uh, you know, the asset quality deterioration which is happening in corporate India. 
because banks like Axis Bank have considerable exposure uh, to stress the uh, corporate groups, and SR is just but one of them. And but if you see the reported NPAs, it would appear that you know that things are not much of a concern. So I think market should start closely examining what is not reported in the numbers. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I buy your point, uh, point regarding the kind of exposure probably has to the SR group as well and you know the way the stocks probably reacting to that development and, and I'll, I'll get you that story once again for the viewers who probably missed it yesterday in, in regard to what we'd broken as far as the entire, entire SR de debt bomb is concerned is what we were tracking in terms of the way how a couple of the banking counters have, expo have exposure to this entire angle but Beyond that as well, I mean, what we seem to be, what the market seems to be worried about, the kind of sales that we're seeing, ARCs as well. And you know, you're somebody who's been tracking this for years together. You've been commenting on this in the past as well. Is that a trend which is now, again, throwing a lot of concern? This is another technique which banks use to report lower NPAs, these sales to ARC. Now, I always view that sales to ARC should be classified as part of your stress asset portfolio. Because finally it rests as, as a poor quality investment on the bank's books. Because very rarely do ARC pick up the entire amount to which cash proceeds. So therefore, you know, this is just a technique where you get a favored ARC which you're very close to uh, at, a, you know, at a reasonable valuation for the bank uh, to offload the assets. Now all these things I think analysts are also now recognizing that uh, this should be all part of the bank's uh, NPA and should not be treated as a performing asset, even though it has been technically sold to the ARC. Right. I take your point, Mr. Hazari. I just want to understand the way forward then. If you're saying that this is just a delayed reaction, are you saying the outlook is clear and no concerns going forward? No, I think there are considerable concerns for the entire banking side going forward because it depends on the state of the Indian economy. Now, I really do not expect any significant improvement in the Indian economy this year, and I think that is also the market consensus. Now, it all depends whether you see the Indian economy and the corporate sector reviving uh, in, you know, in FY17 or not. So I think one should be prepared for, for a very lengthy period of, of very low economic growth and stagnant corporate performance. And therefore, you know, banks' asset quality will continue to be under stress. All right, hey, Mr. Fair enough. Thanks so much for taking the time out today to talk to us and uh, share your views as far as the banking pack is concerned. Axis Bank, they're taking quite a bit of a knock, 6.6% uh, lower about today is what we've been tracking in regard to this counter. Mr. Subramanian, would you agree with uh, some of what uh, we heard from Mr. Hazari there? See, I'll tell you, the, he, the final answer was in the last line that he said, that he said that he doesn't see the Indian economy or the corporate sector improving, and hence there is considerable concern, and that's where I digress. Now, we see a strong economic growth uh, coming through, and I think fundamentally, if you take that approach, okay. when you view all these NPAs as passing things, mm. which will get set right. But if you're going to take the view that the economy is going to go downhill, obviously NPAs are going to worsen. Right. So I think the fundamental position from which you come, and I think we, from whatever we, we track about 260 companies in, across the country. So when we talk to them, yes, they are a bit unhappy with the pace of the reform. They're expecting much more to happen. But at the ground level, right, I think the, the road sector, what the government is doing, government is announcing a lot of things. I think if you give it a little bit of time, I think the Indian economy, definitely you can't uh, say that is on a downtrend. I mean, it's the most shining star, the best, uh, we've got the best FDI inflows right. among all countries. So I think that's the fundamental position from which, uh, you know, the approach is taken. That's the reason. All right. All right, Mr. Ruinam, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for okay. coming down to our studio today and sharing your thoughts and perspective. Thanks. We'll have a quick break right now, but coming up next is Market Guru, Jyoti Vedran Jaipur. He'll be joining us on the show. Stay tuned.